Hey guys, Monday Morning Racer here on location at New England Dragway for the New England NHRA Nationals. And all of that is up next from Friday. We're going to be looking at Top Fuel Harley and Mount Motor Pro Stock Plus interviews from pro drivers next on Monday Morning Racer.
breakaway for the NHRA New England Nationals. I caught up with Bob Pasca. Man, Bob, you've been lighting it up here lately. Yeah, hey, listen, that's what Ford and all these Ford fans expect, you know, to go out there and compete for the wins. Very fortunate to have picked up back-to-back -back wins. You've got a great car, great team. Uh, I love racing here in New England. It's a track that I've grown up in my whole life, and we love to, do, uh, to keep the streak going. Awesome. Now, my dad worked for Ford Motor Company, and the pro stock team was Hubert Flat. So the Tasca name got thrown yeah. around the uh, family household a lot. Look, how does it feel to carry the weight of really a prestigious drag racing name week in to week out in the NHRA scene? And my goal all along was to just leave the Tasca racing, Ford racing history a little richer than I found it in the sport of drag racing. And, you know, very fortunate to have had a lot of people in my career put me in a position to win. I uh, just, you know, dreaming as a kid, wanted to race a Nitro Funny car and represent Ford Motor Company and PPG, all these great sponsors that have supported us over the years. And, you know, hey, it's taken us a long time to get to where we are, and we're going to, you know, we're going to keep working hard and putting our team in a position to win. Awesome. Now, talk to me. You did something that in the world of motorsports is really kind of unheard of. You had a trade with John Force Racing, yeah. right? How'd that work out? Well, a lot of people thought I was crazy. I don't think they think I'm crazy anymore, but uh, I just wasn't happy with, with our setup. I just didn't think that it would be the best chance I had to win a championship. Uh, John wanted one of my crew chiefs. Uh, I wanted one of his. And uh, after a few phone calls back and forth, we did a straight up trade. Uh, just like you see in professional sports, I brought in John Schaefer, who I'd never worked with, but I've always had a lot of respect for. I knew Mike Neff very well. Mike, I've always wanted to race with Mike. And Mike and John were very friendly. Uh, and it kind of just clicked. We were really um, fortunate to have had the three of them available. You know, Eric has been with me and John and, and Mike. And the rest is kind of history. We changed everything. The only thing the same in that car rolling the Richmond was me. And I have never done that in my career without testing. And we kind of just threw a setup together that they were comfortable with. Took us, you know, took us by two races to get it sorted out. Uh, I thought we could have won Topeka. That's how good the car was. And then we went into Bristol and won, and went into Norwalk and won. And you know, it's it's not just the fact we won two races. It's how we've won two races. This car is just flat out outran everyone that we pulled up alongside of. And as a driver and team owner, you know, that's what you work towards. And you know, we got a good car. I told the guys don't even clean it. Leaving Norwalk, we, we kept it the same, so we're coming here with a setup that we know very well. So, Bob, you know, pulling into uh, New England Dragway today, they got some nostalgia funny cars set up over there, some beautiful machines. And I know a lot of funny car fans, even myself, we've seen these bodies kind of go away from any stock appearance. Though you got a beautiful PPG machine back there right now. What's your take on it as a drag race fan and as a racer of these bodies maybe one day being a whole lot more stock appearing? Well, I think our body's the most stock appearing of all of them. You know, when we designed the new Mustang, to your point, we wanted to make it distinctively looking Mustang. And at the same time, making sure we didn't give up in aerodynamics to some of our competitors' cars that are out here. And I really take my hats off to the Ford engineers. And, you know, not only did they deliver an incredibly aerodynamic car, you've seen the results on the racetrack, but it's distinctly Mustang. So there's a balance there because at 330 miles an hour, we need X amount of downforce so we don't take off like an airplane. But yet we still want it to look like a Mustang. And I think this is the best iteration of any car that's ever been built. Awesome. Bob, one last question for you. Look, it's pretty warm out here today. Now, not by Southern standards as a Southern boy as myself, but ice cream and summer just go together. So for a guy that goes over 300 miles per hour, what's your favorite flavor? Is it wild or mild? I like wild ice cream. What is it? You know, um, for me, back in the day when I wasn't on a strict diet eating ice cream, it was probably... Uh, Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream is what I probably eat, but they got me on a strict diet now, so no ice cream for me anymore. Hey, I wait, to, wait's time. <laughs> that's right. You know, I, we got to keep this thing on weight, and uh, just excited to be here, and we'll see what the next one brings. All right. Thank MMR you. gang, this is Bob Taska. Bob, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Monday morning race room location in the pits at the NHRA New England Nationals. I caught up with Chris Powers. He's here this weekend because Mountain Motor is in the house. Uh, Chris, look, I'm excited with Mountain Motor finally kind of getting a shot with the NHRA. I remember showing up at what was Red River uh, Dragway in Louisiana and seeing Mountain Motor for the first time and just being in awe how big the motors were and the performance of them. So talk to me, what are the thrills of piloting a Mountain Motor Pro Stock? Oh, it's definitely got to be the clutch and the, the shift through the gearbox. Yeah. Um, it's definitely the most impressive part and, uh, uh, you know, a hard car to, to get a handle on. Okay, Chris, so the NHRA for years really kind of snubbed Mountain Motor, honestly. And this year and a little bit last year, y'all finally kind of get a shot. You can get a glimpse of the show and people can see the Mountain Motors for the first time if they never really took the time to go to PDRA or IHRA. So what do you hope... Are the well, what do you hope is the future for Mountain Motor Pro Stock in NHRA drag racing? Uh, I mean, it'd be nice to see like eight to ten races for us. I think any more than that would be too much, and, and keep us east of the, you know, Mississippi. I think would be good for our class. Everybody's on the east, so uh, I think we'd have a strong showing with a, a nice car count. Great. So, what are the different challenges from running quarter mile with NHRA and then PDRA with the eighth of mile? What's 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 different? Our, our car's set up the same. The only thing is, you got a two second one ride. That's awesome. It. Awesome. So, Chris, uh, who is who is helping you currently to be out here running these races? I see Liberty Gear on the back of the car. Who else? Uh, ATI Performance is a huge help. That's pretty much who uh, helps us get out to all these races. Um, you know, they're an automatic transmission builder, but we have a good partnership with them, and we use some of their parts on the engine and things like that. So. Awesome. Look, Chris, thanks for being out. Thanks for having a pit sign that says, come in and visit Pit Spot Open and being active and open to the fans. Appreciate that. Hope you do well this weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and thanks for all the fans that come out. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Sale. What is that? 
what, is, what does that mean for you? How does that make you feel? It's sad to see, but I understand uh, the family that put it up for sale. And I'm just hoping that someone comes along that loves drag racing and loves our sport and wants to keep it as is at the track. And hopefully we'll get to continue to race there because I love that track. Awesome, awesome. All right, so I've been asking the driver this. I, I, I'm a food guy. If anybody's ever seen me on camera, they can tell why. But for a lady that's going over 300 miles per hour, it's getting hot. Ice cream is great when it's hot. Is it a wild flavor or a mild flavor? What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Black cherry or black raspberry. Cherry or raspberry. Oh, those are good. Those are good. So black cherry or raspberry for Audrey Worm. Audrey, we hope you do well this weekend. Thank, Thank you for your time. You. Thank you very much. in the pits at the New England NHRA Nationals, caught up with J.R. Todd, the 2018 Funny Car Champion. So, J.R., first, look, watching you pack your parachute and you're rolling it over, folding it, there's a little white placard you wrote on. What was that? Uh, I'm just keeping track of how many runs we get on the shoots. We're trying some, it's kind of experimental uh, shoots, trying to make them live longer. So we're just trying to get an idea of how many runs we can get out of them. Uh, sometimes it's one or two runs, sometimes it's up to 30 runs. So it just basically all depends on uh, how fast is the HL Toyota Camry goes in the 1,000 feet. When we get up to speeds around 30 miles an hour, you drive into the chutes. What that means is you actually pull the chute before you get to the finish line. So by the time you get to the finish line, the chute's coming out. It's, uh, it's a lot of wear and tear on them. And when you reach those high speeds, that's when it uh, really puts a lot of force on them. That's when you see the tears and what have you. That's why I mark them as semi runs we can get out of them. Awesome. So how much roughly does a chute replacement cost you guys? Well, it just depends uh, how badly damaged it is. Sometimes we can get it back to uh, Simpson Race uh, products. And they can put a patch on it. And we'll, uh, keep using it. Sometimes it gets little holes in it and I'll put some duct tape on it and uh, keep using it up as much as you can. But uh, I mean, you're looking at a few hundred dollars. Actually, it's more than that. Probably uh, $500 a shoot. So they're they're not cheap. And then when you got the uh, the Kevlar shoots, the yellow ones that you see here, they're up to a thousand dollars a shoot. All right. So JR, I have to ask any of these pro drivers like yourself that did junior dragsters, because I did junior dragsters myself. Look, what have you taken from the days you were in a junior, no more than like 60 miles per hour, all the way to the day of driving over 300? What stuck with you? I mean, it's, uh, it starts at the age of 10. For me, uh, 1993 racing junior dragsters, just taking cracks at the tree and, and getting seat time. I and mean, I feel like a lot of us that got started racing junior dragsters that are out here racing professionally now got just as or maybe more laps than a lot of the professionals out here that have been doing it way longer than we have. It's just uh, kind of like getting that um, routine down the, the fundamentals of dry racing and carrying that up to the professional level. I mean, when I was racing juniors, all I wanted to do was uh, move up to a big car, you know, a, a bracket car, and uh, did that. And you never think you're going to get to this point in your career. You I mean, you set a goal for yourself that you want to, then uh, when you get to this point, it's kind of surreal looking back at, uh, as a kid, make it to, uh, to this level in the sport. It's kind of like uh, a kid race or a kid playing TV football and make it to the NFL. Awesome. Now, you're talking about at this level, at this point, and you're doing it with one of the most prestigious and historical guys, Coletta. 
So how does that feel to be in a Coletta ride? It's awesome, man. I, I mean, I grew up watching guys like uh, Scott Coletta and uh, going to IRP, uh, watching Thursday Night Thunder, uh, watching Doug Coletta race uh, sprint cars and midgets around there. And now to be a part of that group, it's just uh, it's a dream come true. I mean, my whole career, once I got racing professionally, this is uh, some place that I strive to be at Coletta Motorsports. I mean, it's uh, we race hard, we uh, work hard, and we also like we have a lot of fun over here. It's uh, a unique environment, and uh, it's different from any team out here. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for uh, for anything. Uh, it's uh, a lifelong goal, and I'm just uh, honored to be here. Awesome. So, Jr., I've got a, a mission from some of my followers and fans, and they're funny car fans. They want to know from you drivers. All right. When you look at the era of Funny Car, probably one of the great eras was 70s, early 80s, and there were bodies that still had a stock look to them. And now you've got some of these smooth out bullets y'all are running. So as a race fan and as a driver, any desire to see these bodies get a little bit more stock appearance? For me, no, because I want to go as quick and fast as possible. But uh, the cool thing is now like NHRA has uh, the Nostalgia Series where you can go back and, and see those bodies or race those bodies. I mean, Ron Caps, he gets in one, uh, Del Worsham, Chad Head, they've all raced them. I mean, I'd, I'd love to jump in one of those things. But yeah, as far as that era, I kind of wish that uh, I was racing back then. The guys like uh, Snake and Raymond Beetle and, and Bernstein, I mean, those were some badass looking cars. And it was a... Uh, a cool time for funny cars, you know, 32 car fields, going dry hops and what have you. We're now, like, we get so much help from Toyota and TRD with this Toyota Camry making it as streamlined as possible, taking it to the wind tunnel and things like that, where it's just a, a different era of racing, but uh, it's it's all cool. Okay, so last question for you, JR. So we're here in New England, and if you go into the uh, restaurant, sit down, seafood, what do you want to get? New England clam chowder or lobster roll? That's funny you said that. On my way to the track today with uh, Richie uh, Crampton, we stopped at a place uh, down the road and I had a lobster roll for, for lunch. So uh, there's your answer. There it is, lobster roll. Folks, with the Monday Morning Racer Gang, this is JR Todd. JR, thank you. No problem, thank you. again here in New England dragway for the New England NHRA Nationals caught it up again with Clay. Clay, since the last time we talked about Waffle House and being in Atlanta, you've had a little bit of a rough go. Talk to me about it. Well, you know what? I'm not really griping too much. We're in the top 10 in points. We're a little bitty team. I mean, we've been to a couple final rounds, number one qualifier. All things are good. We are just knocking it out one run at a time. Every chance I get to stumble on that loud pedal, I love it. I love my job. Awesome. Clay, look. You're one of the few that has the IHR, IHRA background out here, and honestly, some NHRA fans just don't even realize you've got the background in IHRA. Wonder, how do you feel about that? You know, no one ever really mentions what you did there, but you had some great accomplishments. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we won six straight IHRA World Championships in a top fuel car. We won a ton of races right here at this very racetrack in Epic. You know, it's, uh, it's part of my history that I'm very proud of, and I'm reunited with the same crew chief this year that I won six straight World Championships with. We're having a blast. Uh, I mean, it's just awesome, and I love coming up here to Epping. You know, it's just such a beautiful part of the country. It is hot today, or make the track a little tricky, but anytime we go out there and put on a show, I love doing it. Awesome. So, uh, definitely, I can remember as a kid, you know, Paul Romine, Clay Milliken, and those battles, they, they were great times. Thoroughly enjoyed watching you in IHRA. It's great obviously to have you in NHRA and hope you do well. Now, I've been noticing this t-shirt you got, disgusting. What, what's that all about? Well, my buddy David Fryberger, if y'all don't know Fryberger, I, I don't know how you don't, 
but he and Mike Finnegan do a show called Roadkill. Roadkill is massive, and they do the craziest car stuff. And this is one of the cars they literally dug out of a junkyard and kind of halfway fixed it up, got it running, and so I'm wearing his T-shirt. Fry Burger's my buddy. He's done a lot of a lot of cool things. Just most recently, he sold a shirt that had a dog on it. And my wife and I, we work with an organization called Paws and Claws, and Fry Burger donated five thousand dollars to Paws and Claws just for the T-shirt sales. Good friend. And if I can help him sell a T-shirt, I'm gonna help him sell a T-shirt. So the disgust day. And, I, and I, here's one thing he says that's always pretty cool. You don't have to get it right, just get it running. And that's kind of what they do on Road to Kill. Awesome. One more question for you. So you mentioned it is a little warm today. It might not be hot Atlanta warm, but it is warm. I'm curious. So for a guy that goes over 300 miles per hour, has such a excitable demeanor as yourself, What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Is it a wild flavor, flavor or a mild flavor? I'm pretty simple. I love chocolate ice cream. Chocolate, chocolate ice, cream. ice cream guy, that's for sure. Awesome. All right, Monday morning racer gang, that's been Clay Milliken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.